done any speaking and um, I'm on uh, yeah, cocktail chemicals that um, taken together have uh, the effect of what many side effects up to and including instant death. It's not sounding too good, is it? It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, fine for you. Uh oh. So this is LBC. I am uh, Nick Abbott for uh, a limited period. You're going to have to uh, help me out a lot tonight. 0870909073. It's um, it's actually not sounding very good at all, is it? Uh, I was mentioning this uh, last night. I, I mentioned it on uh, this show. And uh, plenty of water. Would be good. I just did a, a throat spray, and it, it seems to have actually made me worse. Um. So maybe a can you mix throat sprays and throat lozenges? Yes. <laughs> on the air. Say it on the air. Worth a try, I think. We, that sounds very cavalier of you. <laughs> <laughs> sounds very much like you just don't care. As so I was mentioning this last night about the um uh the um <coughs> I was mentioning this last night about the um the buildings up and down the... the oh God, this is ridiculous. Am I going to be able to do this? What happens if I can't do this? Dead air. Dead air? Is that allowed? Give it a try. So I was um, uh, talking about the buildings up and down the River Thames and... Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> and how um, planning, if you want to get planning for uh, what you want to do, is virtually impossible. Is, have, we got, have we got a call? Because I think somebody else better do a bit of talking right now. Uh, how about Jerry in Northwood? Is he connected? In a moment, what I can fill. Uh, hey, Jerry. I'm sorry, I'll just turn my radio if otherwise you get feedback. Uh. I thought for the first initial bit that you were actually perhaps just sort of having a bit of a sort of Ian Lee type joke, but uh, you don't sound at all well, don't sound even well enough to be on air. I don't mean it rudely. Well, um. I mean, I mean it's humane. I mean, I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I mean, you, I can't hear you very well, so what? You are ill. Yeah. And you do say you sound bloody ill. Um, I kind of do, don't I? Isn't there anybody else that's sort of around? Well... Isn't anybody lurking? Um... It's tragic because it's sort of, sort of a, a rare chance for you to be on air again because we've, they've now made a proper appointment, so to speak, so to speak. This is the first time I've, I've actually done any speaking today because I, I thought, uh, you last night... I, I, I enjoyed you last night. You, you just, I thought again you were taking the mickey last night because you sort of... Had you taken a combination of drugs? I no, I was on a lot. I was on a lot. I, I thought it was a touch of the Ian Lee sort of wind everybody up, make everybody come out with strange things. But you, honestly, you do sound too ill to be on air. I kind of do. Not my, yeah. not for my, that's for, not for my advantage. Um, but just, you sound, sound appalling. Yeah. And, uh, you're not three hours. So hang on, it's ten. It doesn't sound. Uh, three hours. You're not going to. You're going to be worse. It doesn't sound like I'm actually going to make it, does it? And it, then you've got to, if you really have taken, a, and, and as, as it's normal to do so, a combination of medicaments, you probably shouldn't drive home. <laughs> a lot of them grow antihistamines and things which make you drowsy. No, it's just like Nurofen. And, uh, you'll have to forgive me, I'm going to suck a sweet on it. I know it's kind of rude, but um, either, either I'll just stand up and leave now, or I'll try. 
working. Well, I'll try everything I've got with me. The same way Rayburn was a recording, because you could drag her in. Um, there's usually somebody lurking. Well, there's a guy on reception. <laughs> <laughs> I actually enjoy your... Pro I mean, don't, 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 I'm not expressing it with amazement, shouldn't be taken with amazement, but I sort of rather liked you when I heard you, and I heard you with a bog-off man, and I thought, what's this going to be all around? You heard me with the what now? You were called the bog-off man, because you used to tell everybody to bog-off, didn't you? That's a new one on me. I've never heard that before in my life. I thought Clive Bullis said that at some stage. Well, you don't want to listen to him. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I just ring out of sympathy to say that much as it is your job to be on air, much as you are paid to be on air, I think it's... Get off the air. <laughs> I, I think, I mean, for your own sake. <laughs> Get off the air. Get off the air. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, perhaps, perhaps, is, is that Lucy George there? No, Lucy's taking the night off. Well, who's with you then tonight? Um, why, well, well, if I gave you names, would you know? Well, he well Helen, 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 Helen's, it's Helen Turner, she's done shows before. It's, uh, Natalie. Sorry? Na Natalie. <laughs> oh, I know Natalie, she's got a lovely, she's got a nice voice. Huh, there's a guy who knows you here, Natalie. Well, I've spoken to her and I've heard her. He's a fan. I, I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm gay, but I can still like women. He's urging you to put your phones on and come in here and take over. I mean, give her a chance on air. I mean, she might even get a job out of it. Hey, this is like a Gene Kelly movie, isn't it? It's like, let's do the show right here. LBCs have been a bit like an abattoir lately. Why walk not? in, get your head chopped off, and walk out six months later. So, but yours is most unfortunate, because the chance to be on air, and as you say, you don't seem to do much anyway. You seem to be glad of your airtime. Huh. That's a most strange phone call. I just picked up the phone just to yeah, It's kind of weird, we yeah. You seem to know a lot more about us than we know about you. That's beginning to scare me. No, because I, li I listen virtually constantly to LBC, except a um, little part of the uh, early evening, let's say. Yeah. Uh, when I usually go to and other channels run by National Corporation. I think we're run by National Corporation. Um, Simon Bennett, is he around? Uh, Simon Bennett? Because he used to do a program with uh, Thingy. Oh, Thingy, yeah, he's very good. <laughs> you know exactly who I mean, and um, he's Dealey. I <laughs> no idea. He's co-producer, he's Dealey. <laughs> anyway, I think this is getting a bit too inbred, Jerry. Well, <laughs> I've not been near you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you've, not touched, you've not even touched my knee yet. But, uh, well, the night's young. Well, I just wish you all the best, but I don't... Uh, the, 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 the but you don't hold out much hope, yeah. Most peculiar conversation, but... Very, uh, very strange. I really strange thought you were taking the... the um, mix no, no, I'm deadly I mean, serious. If you're as bad as you sound, I mean, you, it's just not fair on you. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what's it's it worth? Well, however many... Well, I think it's about 300 quid, about 100 Not even on a secret CIA plane would it be I think treated it's in this way. It's worth, yeah. but I think it's really be, but a cruel and unusual to punishment. That is to crawl into bed and forget your 100 pounds an hour. I, <laughs> I, well, I get all, all my sympathies, and I hope it's, it's my agent who you don't fun. carry it out. All right, thanks a lot, Jim. If you are carried out, if you carry out in Natalie's arms, you'd be in good company. I literally can't wait. i got to go, mate. Tell I'm sorry. Bye. Bye bye. Uh, well, nice man though. This is uh, LBC. I'm Nick Abbott for a limited period. Let's go with um, uh, uh, call in Uxbridge. Hello, Robert. Nick Ian Abbott. How are you, sir? It's not Uxbridge. Why do you keep lying about that? You're in Wales. Okay, Robert from the Ronda. You can see my fan website if you go to nickabbott.com. <laughs> Don't bother. Don't bother. Hey, I have a very good radio show. People could listen to. Anyway, how are you? you? Your voice does sound rough. I, it does uh, kind of sound really rough, yeah. It didn't sound quite this rough when I tested it out before I came out. Perhaps you should record yourself a I'm, more. I'm blaming the seat. Seat? Disease. How is it going to manage when you bump it? Is my bump to Andy Crane tomorrow morning? How am I going to manage when I bump into Andy Crane tomorrow morning? You, yeah, you're, you're not going to bump into me, because you and Andy Crane look very similar, apparently. People have said that, yeah. I'm, sure, I'm not sure he'd be very uh, pleased with that news, but yeah, it's not the first time I've heard that, yeah. Andy Crane. Last time I saw him, he was uh, doing one of the shopping channels. Very good work as well. Uh, like every time you tune to a shopping channel, you see someone you know. It's true. It is true. Uh, there was one of the one of the people running of the shopping channel, one of the presenters, who stood as the conservative MP in the last election. <laughs> Lost. <laughs> and even if you don't know them, they all sound like DJs. Well, but yeah, you can tell they're definitely hospital uh, hey. quality. Anyway, I just thought I'd, uh, I'd like to tell the listeners that I have applied to go on University Challenge. 
From which university? Uh, Swansea University. I don't think Swansea's got a catch shot in hell, is it? Well, uh, it's probably true. There, there was so little people um, willing to take part, I, I made up the last person to sing. The specialist knowledge is politics and media. So what, um, what hopes do you have to get to to get on that program? Um, well, we have a preliminary test oh, on... Um, what does that involve? I don't know, I think they're going to ask us some questions, see how we go. Uh, I don't expect us to get on TV. Well, if it's anything like the A-levels these days, they'll, they'll give you the test over and over and over again until you pass. That's a myth. It's not a myth. I, I saw this today, I couldn't believe it. Let me see if, through the, uh, fog of the chemicals, I can find this You can, you can see your A-levels repeatedly, but you would age uh, compared to the students around you. It says here, sixth formers are resetting A-level papers up to five times to improve oh, results. ridiculous. What's that on the Daily Mail? The uh, repeated attempts increase the likelihood of achieving top grades because the boards will accept the paper with the highest mark. Is that incredible? I don't believe it. Well, I, just, I just hate what, it when the papers or media, were, obviously it hasn't, got, it hasn't got a day, so they start slagging off how easy exams are. The it's figures, not easy. The figures relate to 2004, when the pass rate hit a record 96%, and the proportion of A grades was 22.4%, compared with half of that in 1989. And what's a pass grade? It's A to G? I think G, just I think showing it's up. It's not a C. What was not known at the time was the number of students who had gained the grades at the second, third, or even fourth attempt. That can't be commonly known. People, people must not know that if you, <laughs> if you fail your exam first time, these days you can just keep taking it until you pass. That's why there's such a high level of pass rates uh, for uh, kids taking their exams. Yeah, but they, if they go to university, they usually drop out in the first year. The three exam boards for England have refused to publish the data, saying that they would be too complicated to collate. Too embarrassing, more like. That's incredible. Cynical. It's not cynical, it's just true. That's true. When's last time you went to school? Well... A long time ago. A really long time ago, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to tell people about my um, health problems. Yeah, well, uh, I've had two ingrain toenails yeah, removed okay. recently. Well, nobody cares. What do you mean? Because they do. But thanks for, uh, thanks for, uh, you know, thanks for yeah. not, not passing out on the air. Only, only one dead body on the air at a time. London's LBC 97.3. Okay, this is LBC, I'm Nick Abbott. Let's go with uh, one in Watford. Hello, Ray. Uh, hello, Nick. Uh, how are you? Uh, I'm very good. Uh, I want to ask how you are, because I think it's <laughs> very obvious. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, good or bad health, it's lovely to hear you back on the road again. Well, I'd, um, ordinarily, I'd say it was nice to be back. Yeah. Right uh, now, I'm not sure. I can remember this, uh, uh, there was this other show where you sounded pretty much like you do tonight, and you had this throat spray, and I think it said, before first you spray into the sink. <laughs> Yeah, industrial strength. <laughs> That's where I went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sound this bad at home. No. Well, um... Caution. It yeah. says on the back, do not use... No, well, do not use. I <laughs> 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 so just left it at that. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> mm. It says do not spray in your eyes. What kind of an idiot would spray throat spray in their eyes? <laughs> you, you can bet someone wrote them a lesson, so, you know... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Excuse me, I, I used this throat spray on my cat, and then I set it alight. But you didn't specifically tell me not to in the instructions. Mm, May yeah. I claim my ten million pounds? <laughs> mm. So, um, uh, as, uh, well, whether you, you know or not, I'm one of the uh, net nerds. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, there's already been a mention for nickabbott.com, um, which, of course, is not connected with, directly connected with you, but um, I'll give it a mention. Now, um, can I just point out that that has actually got nothing to do with me at all? I don't uh, sit at home making websites about myself. No, um, but of course, you know, many devoted fans out there. Um, yeah, bless them. Yeah, no, and so, you know, it's like all this time, and, um, you know, I'm one of them, sadly, and um, they're all grouped together under one address. Under one umbrella? Uh, under one umbrella, Under, that's under right. one umblank, under one blanket. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So, um... <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm just wondering if I should even mention mine, because as I 
slightly um, risque title. Well done then. No, I won't. <laughs> but let's just say it starts in the call and then continues. So, um, what have you been up to today, then, right? Well, I've been, um, I've, I've been at work. Um, work, work. For, What's work? Um, I work for a well known supermarket. Right. Uh, on, on the uh, fruit and veg department, which I enjoy. Yeah, quite you, energetic. You in <laughs> yeah, I actually enjoy it, believe it or not. Energetic? Yeah. Explain energetic. Uh, well, especially on a Saturday, um, you know, people seem to descend on the place and literally dismantle the section, so we have to keep it topped up. Well, I always take the... I always go to the back because I know that people like you are always trying to persuade me to buy, to buy the old things that you put at the front. So, oh, yeah. So yeah, I well, move all the stuff that you put at the front <laughs> yeah. and go straight to the back, which ruins your lovely display. Yeah, um, we're required to do that. By the management? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, the way you said that, it made it, made it sound like you're required to do it by law. Um, for, no, I don't imagine it's, uh, the law requires that, but um, it's advisable, and it, you know, I guess it costs us less to try and uh, sell the older stuff first. Because I never buy what's at the front of the shelf in a supermarket. I always go to the back. Yeah. I forever got my um, elbow deep in the sh shelf at uh, wherever it is that I am. Because yeah. I know that there's a, a four-day difference between what's at the front yeah. and what's at the back. Uh, even if you're going to eat it on the same day, you find yourself doing it. Oh, definitely. Always. Mm -hmm. Because if it says, eat in four days, you know that it was made a week ago. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, um... So what horror stories can you tell us about the, uh, produce section in the um, local supermarket? There must be some. Well, uh, nothing really apart from, um, I've, I've looked behind the tray and there was a like, packet of raspberries that should have come off, uh, like a month previously. Do you ever find a tarantula in the bananas? No, uh, fortunately not. Um, actually, uh, there was a packet of, um, spring greens. I found a little caterpillar crawling away. Oh, that's... <laughs> I mean, you'd expect to find that in a farmer's market. Yeah. In fact, if you didn't find some sort of wildlife in, uh, you know, your organic vegetables, then yeah. they wouldn't be the real thing, right? Oh, yeah, uh, especially organic. Yeah. People seem to be obsessed with everything has to be perfect, almost as though nature never touched it. Yeah, um, I mean, lemons, you know, they come waxed or unwaxed. You know, some people have this, I don't know, idea of how lemons should be. Well, everything is waxed. If you you could virtually see your reflection in almost everything you buy, apples, mm, yeah. um, anything that's not got uh, a peel on it, like mm. uh, do they um, they actually wax oranges? They probably do. Yeah, do, and you, yeah. And the one thing about wax is, it will pick up any any dirt that's uh, that is put on it, and so it concentrates the bacteria yeah. on the uh, on the outside of the apple or whatever it is that you're eating. Mm. Yeah, it's I mean, never really appealed to me that much. There's one, there's one particular variety of apples we get, and my goodness, they're so greasy, it's unbelievable. Well, what, what variety? Um, John Gold ones, yeah, they're the cheapest ones, funny enough, we sell. And that's just, uh, I seem to get this ink on my hands every time I put them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wash all fruit with, um, uh, washing up liquid now. Does that sound strange? Um. Yes. Yeah, well, I've never considered that, but, you know, you have to wash everything, that's for sure. Things look... Yeah, but washing it with water doesn't make no difference, because water does not dissolve wax. Hmm. And the wax... Because any apple, you're like you, for instance, you'll go to the toilet, presumably, and you come straight back without washing your hands, and so all the thousands of people who um, molest the fruit daily. Yeah. And so every ba piece of bacteria that's been on your fingers is now yeah. also on uh, the fruit that's going in my mouth. Yeah, that's right. You know, so, so we are required to wash our hands regularly. I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter what section you work on, you know, especially after using the, the, the toilet. All right. Well, maybe you do. But how about the people that pick them? How about the people that are in the middle of a field picking uh, apples yeah. or strawberries or whatever it is? Do you think they're going to trot back to the farm to go to the loo and wash no, their hands? No. Possibly not. <laughs> possibly not, no. All, the, all, the, the, all these things have, you know, you know, come out of the ground, so, you know, so, into it. Exactly. So all of the stuff that's on their fingers is now on your fruit. Yeah. So that's why I, I dip it in, uh, I don't dip it, I squirt uh, washing up liquid on everything that goes in my mouth. <laughs> mm, well, I should just cut, cut out the middle, man, yeah, and uh, gargle that. with washing up liquid. Well, in fact, I'm on the taste of washing up liquid. In fact, right about now, that uh, sounds like a good idea. Mm. 
people are the first to washing up the in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Tastes like victory. Yeah. All right. Well done, Ray. It's lovely. Okay. Ta -ra. Okay. This is um, uh, LBC. I'm Nick Abbott. Let's go with uh, Nicole in Hackney. Nicole. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hi, Vaughan. How is voice to another? Oh, what's wrong with you? Um, I've got the same thing and I've been brave like you and went to work today. <laughs> and uh, did you regret it? Well, I did because my patients ended up nursing me. Your patients? <laughs> yeah. Okay, what kind of patients? I'm a nurse. That, that's the last thing that you want from a nurse is for to show up. <laughs> I know, but actually my voice was quite good, and um, went to work and got worse. And a, in a hospital, right? <laughs> yeah. That seems insane to me. I mean, you go in a hospital to get ill, not to con not to get more disease from the people that are trying to make you well. Didn't they send you home? I um, basically um, we practice good infection control and everything. So I will actually wash my hands if I go into patient's room, but... I hope people can understand me better than that, I can understand you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the two of us, this is pathetic. I know, you must have picked up the same bug. <laughs> so, um, you're a nurse, what should I be doing? What have you done? I've tried some honey and lemon. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> and that hasn't worked, so what's the next thing? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on that. What else? There's nothing else, really. <laughs> oh, there must be something else. Come on. Hundreds of millions of pounds are pumped into the medical profession, research and uh, development uh, section, and they can't come up with anything for this at all. No, that's advice. We've got to the law today. I parked on a double red line to go to the only late night, in fact, 24 hour chemists that I know, which is in um, Earl's Court. Uh -huh. in order to go over the road and get this throat spray, which uh, I think has made me ten times worse than I was before I took it. Oh, uh, because I didn't sound this bad when I set out from home. I'm sure I didn't. Otherwise, I would have made a phone call. <laughs> People through the glass are looking absolutely petrified. I'm not I'm dead yet. Cheer up. up. It's not happening to you. There's, there's three layers of glass between my germs and you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> anyway, chin up, Nicole. Okay, thank you. The best thing you need to do is to rest. You need to go home. <laughs> rest, yeah. Well, unfortunately, that's not an option right now. <laughs> thank you, then. Oh, Bye. Ta -ra. Uh, this is LBC. I'm Nick Abbott. Let's go with uh, a call in... Um, let's have Sidco. Hello, Brendan. All right, Nick. How are you? Um, you need to do some serious gargling. Yeah, I tried that. I tried gargling with uh, aspirin. No, just like normal warm, well, as hot as water as you can get. But you got there's a knack to it. You got to get it right. Deep throat. I've got to get it what? Sorry. You've got to get it deep throat. Deep throat. Yeah, no, no, no wimpy gargling. You got to get it right down there. Is this a joke? Oh, uh, it'll work. <laughs> I saw Deep Throat, by the way. I saw it in, uh... I've never seen it. Huh? I've never seen it. It's not worth it. I saw it on Times Square in New York, which is, yeah. right, which is probably the best place in the whole wide world to see it, right? Yeah. Oh, in well. the 19... in, uh, in the 70s, 1978, before they cleaned New York up. Yeah. When you felt that you might get shot at any time of the day or night. Uh, but no, it's, uh... It's really not worth it. What to go to New York to see a porno. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, if if you learn nothing else from this show, it's don't go to New York just to see a porno. All right. I've been to the uh, with a few mo mates to the Soho one. One on. Uh, yeah, well, they don't exist anymore because no. Soho so has been cleaned up just like New York has. This is LBC, and a uh, going way to come back. London's LBC 97.3. Nick Cabot. 0870-90-90-973 Exactly what that guy with the voice just said. Right, let's go with um, Finchley. Hello, Anwar. Oh, hi, Nick. How are you? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Well, I was just ringing up to try and cheer you up a little bit. Um, I'm not one of your stalker fans like you seem to have. You seem to have quite a, a large fan base. But I remember when you were on with Carol McGiffin. Oh, yeah. 
Yes, you could always ring her up, I guess, um, and uh, ask her to fill in for a little bit, but I don't know whether you'd want to dare to do that or not. I think that would actually uh, be an excellent idea. I could get her on. free like her mad, mad uh, cow that she was back then. What? Uh, no, I'm only joking, I'm only joking. But, um, no, she was, she was very good, the both of you were. Yeah, maybe I should give Carol a call, she'll come, <laughs> yeah. come in and take over. Yeah, also, you should be slightly careful, though, because you might have, there's this, yeah, chap, Ben from, I don't know where it is, but he's been banned on Ian Lee's show. He's been banned on a number of shows, actually, so I have him lurking around, ringing up and trying to take over, so you just need to be slightly forewarned about that, I think, really. So well, I'll, I'll give you a heads up on that. Tell me forewarned. Yeah, definitely. But it's just, it's nice to hear you back on the radio, because I, I actually used to stay in to, to listen to you, and I was, it was just nice to, to have you back on. I was like, I think that's the chap I used to listen to, to but, um, it's nice to have you back. So, uh, so welcome back, and I hope your voice gets better soon. Um, and maybe we'll have you on again. <laughs> yes, yes I'll, get, I'll, I'll climb out my coffin to come back on tomorrow night. Yeah, well, that's all I wanted to say, so I, I wish you the best anyway. Like I said, it's nice to have you back. Very nice to be. Thanks a lot, mate. No problem. You take care now. That's all. Okay, bye-bye. This is LBC. It's 0870-90973. And uh, you really are going to have to help me out, because if I have to do all the talking for the next two and a half hours, then uh, there's going to be a lot of silence. Um, I thought uh, yesterday we would do a, um, a texting poll about who you think is the most desperate person on television. It seems that there's nothing on TV now except those um, desperate reality shows which uh, agents all over town are thanking their lucky stars about because they can place um, people who they have been trying to put on the uh, TV for a run. Actually, is there a piece of music that we can play or something like that and I'll go out and gargle and uh, then come back and see if I can carry on? Do we have anything like that? That's a one and a half minute track. <laughs> Got anything longer than that? A break. Yeah, all right, let's take a break. London's LBC 97.3. Nick Abbott. Very seldom do you actually get to um, come along and say um, your bit with minimal interruption from the host of a radio station. And this is your opportunity right now. This is something on your mind. You want to say with, uh, uh, um, really, I couldn't shout you down. Then give us a ring on 0870-90-90-973. Try and say that again, 0870-90-90-973. And um, you'll both have the airwaves to yourself. In fact, we could connect callers to each other and <laughs> could take over the show. Because it doesn't sound as though I'm going to be able to um, do this. This is so terrible. I did not sound this bad before I got on the car and drove here. I'm blaming this stuff that um, I almost uh, I risk getting my car towed away to get. Anti anesthetic th throat spray. I can't recommend it. I can't not recommend it highly enough. So, um, what's happening there, Natalie? We're trying to find Bill Buckley. Is he in the building? He's not in the building yet. If you're listening, Bill, hurry up. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> if not, we might... I might feel really terrible for him because he's got a, a really long, a long, a long show as it is. How are you feeling now? 
Well, I don't feel. I'm, I'm, co I'm covered in sweat. I don't actually feel bad. I just can't talk. Which is for a phone-in host is um a bit of a problem. What is you? Yeah. yeah. If if I could do the show signing. I would probably understand what you meant. That could work. Maybe we could translate it. Maybe you'd like to take over. <laughs> have you been on the air a lot? Uh, I've been on a little bit. And what have you talked about when you have been on? Um, well, anything really. Anything, anything anyone throws at me. Okay, how about shoes? I love shoes. Lots of shoes. Shoes is a very good topic for me, actually. I thought it might be. Uh, yes, I was actually doing a bit of shoe shopping earlier, so um, I love, love the shoes. Let me guess. They're shoes that you've that would hobble you to wear, right? Yeah, look, look above comfort. Absolutely, it's yes. better to look better than to be comfortable. Now I have a theory about this, and it's that women don't do this to impress men. Women do this to impress women. Am I right? I think so, but I always remember, as a man, the women always look at a shoe pair of shoes on a man first. I mean, that's probably the most important thing. I think. You mean from the eyes to the mm. shoes? And well, my eyes immediately go to the shoes. And, and they don't pause in, at any point in between? No. Shoes, then face. <laughs> so it's straight away, it's instant. Probably why I get neck ache, maybe, I don't know. So it's shoes, and then face, yeah. and but nothing in between. You don't even, you know... It's it's a if you look at the shoes and the face and it's not good, then you disregard the whole thing. <laughs> if the shoes are bad, the face is okay, you might be able to help the situation. What about trainers? Trainers are fine, trainers are good. But any old, any old chap can wear trainers. That's true, they've got to be fairly clean, not too smelly looking, no holes. So, do women buy uncomfortable hobbling shoes to impress men, or is it to impress other women? I think probably more likely to impress other women, because women do compliment each other on the shoes. Is it impressing, or is it competing with? It's jealousy. Because I have another theory. I don't think women like each other very much. Um, some of them are okay. I don't want to rave about them too much. Because they don't... It, it seems that all of the things that men think that women are doing for them, the way they dress and so on, yeah. I don't think that they're doing it for the men at all. I think they're doing it to compete with other, with other women. There is, there is a level of competition with women, yes. When you wear something and, you, and someone else is wearing something that's very lovely, you are a little bit jealous and, and wouldn't mind it. Do you understand that men would never put shoes on that were, that were deliberately uncomfortable? Neither would any designer make a pair of shoes for a man Yeah. that it was uncomfortable to wear. That would be crazy. Are you bothered about shoes? Do you have a lot of shoes? Um, not ri not, no, I don't, no. not really. Um, but it just seems, why do you women put up with it? I think it might be better if we just all had bare feet. There'd be no competition there, would there, and it would be... Well, then, then pedicures. Issue. Yeah, oh. feet are a big issue. Yeah, that's true. Anklets. Onions. Mm -hmm. Pedicures, you'd be compared, you'd be... It's so like one woman would have Chanel nail polish and the other would have to go Eve Saint Laurent. Yeah. So there would be no end to it. That's true. That's true. So what is it with the heels? The heels? The yeah. high heels? Exactly. I don't know. I believe men find them very, very sexy, do they not? No, you see, there you are. You're wrong. It's, well, it's kind of a fetish, but I don't think you, the implication is that women were doing it for men, but I don't mm. think that that's true. So that's okay, I'm tall, so I don't like to wear the high heels, so that's, that's a great thing, then I can just stick to flats. Brilliant. That's, that's sorted, and I'm very happy about that. <laughs> right. Fancy a call? Are any of those ready? I can make them ready immediately. Let's go to Jackie in Bracknell. Right. Do you want her? Yeah, go ahead. I have to do it right. Hey, Jackie. Hello. Hey, Jackie. Who's that? Is that Nick? Yeah. Hello, am I actually live on air at the moment? Yeah, sounds like you. <laughs> I thought I'd just come in and try and rescue you from your voice, my dear. You sound a real trooper. Yeah, that's, that's me. I'm so brave. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> so you, you, you put a, a call out for our Bill Buckley to arrive? I feel really guilty about that because the guy's not supposed to be on for until okay. one. But he's a real trooper. He's a lovely, lovely guy. And I, I, I know everybody who's in that, you know, profession. You don't want to, you know, put it on to somebody else to do and say, can you do another couple of hours? But 
he's a real true, but he'll be able to do it. And as you say, that you know, us listeners can ring in and we can talk to each other and things like that. That's not going to be a problem. So what's on your mind then? Um, nothing. I was just, you know, just listening to the thing. I've been, you know, asleep most of the day because I was listening to Bill to six o'clock and then I was actually then, um, you know, just pottering around to ten o'clock and then fell asleep and I've been, I wanted desperately to watch the Olympic Games today and I missed the first days of it, so... Oh, come on. I, I, what do you mean, come on? I love my sport. You're talking to somebody here who basically, back in 2000, took two weeks off work to actually watch the Olympic Games from Australia live. <laughs> I think because I'm, I'm a sports person, you see, and I did sport in my younger day. I can't do it at the moment because I'm, I'm actually injured. But I used to play table tennis and hockey for the county. No, table tennis isn't a sport. Table tennis, yeah. <laughs> table tennis is a sport. Most, <laughs> of, most of the things in the Winter Olympics aren't sports. Um, I've got to admit some of the things that I've seen just briefly today, like I think it's a freestyle skiing, and I'm thinking, hang on a minute. Well, no, that, that is a sport. See, <laughs> th things that you can do and be fat <laughs> are not sports, they're pastimes. <laughs> yeah, all right. Things like darts. Oh, forget about that. I hate, I, I hate darts. That's Snooker what is not a sport. No, that, to me that is too boring, and I tell you what the other sport which is really really boring and that's going to be cricket only for the fact that it can go on for five days and you still have a draw at, it at the end of the match i think it's quite interesting that um yeah. the whole country has suddenly got cricket fever when uh, england won the ashes yeah i didn't I but didn't as soon know. as they as soon as that game was over everybody immediately forgot about cricket again yeah well, they've brought this new thing in, haven't they? 2020 cricket, which is where the match is actually done over 20 overs in an evening. So it means that you can go down there, say, at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, you'd be over by 10 o'clock, and you've been out for a, you know, a game of cricket of some kind. Uh, if it's going to be over by 10, I'll show up at 10. Yeah, that, well, you should have. Same here. But it's, it's a little bit more interesting, I think, than having to wait five days for a result. But I've got to admit, I did not, I, you know, I thought, oh, yeah, we've won the Ashes, whoopee. As I say, I'm not a cricket fan, but I am, and I, Bill Buckley's going to hate me for saying this, but I am a football fan as well. Well, no, that's a proper sport. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It is. That's a proper sport for, yeah. for well, fit Bill people. Buckley doesn't like it. Well, Bill, Bill Buckley ain't here right now. <laughs> <laughs> so which team, without, you know, your voice, which team do you support? Well, you know what, I don't really support any team, because I kind of came to the sport late. Right. Um, so you like if you like me sometimes. Yes, I I've got two teams I support. But if you see a very good game, we think that's brilliant, fantastic. You you don't care who wins and who loses. I don't think that there's game. I don't think there's, there, there is a, a better sport mm -hmm. to watch in the whole wide world than football. Mm -hmm. And uh, can we even wait for the World Cup? Well, I'm going to really you're going to dump me now because I don't actually support England. <laughs> I did say it live on li air last night. I, I go for the German team. Why? Why? Are you German? Uh, no. I just have German contacts, and when I think when German I German contacts. <laughs> I can't go into it. It's a long story. Great. Sorry, people, who've been listening. Well, hey, I've got um, <laughs> two and a quarter hours. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say anything on that. It's not. Do you think you can there. string it out that long? <laughs> Oh, I could, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to Nick. It's just Nick, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. So, no, I, 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 just think, I, I think the very first match I saw was back in the 1970s. And, you know, professional match, you know, saw on TV the first time. I didn't see the, I can't remember the World Cup. But it would have been the 1970 World Cup. And I can remember seeing Germany versus Holland in the final. And I just thought, wow. This is a good game, and I've always in, been inclined to watch Germany after that. Huh. You're not going to get many friends by saying that. I know. Yeah. Oh, well, never mind. It's like, yeah, but it's quite good when you're at work, and everybody's going around with their little England flags, and, you know, there used to be two of us used to go into work with our little German flags. It just gets a little bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm still alive. <laughs> well, there's always this summer. Yeah, that'll be. Ca I can't wait. Till yeah, till I can't wait as well. I think England may have a good chance of getting through. You know what? I think it's probably, in uh, including the 1966 year, mm. I think it's probably the best chance we've ever had. Yeah, yeah, I think we have as well. We've got some very good players. Long, you know, Sven, you know, I know he keeps, you know, changing the team over, etc. But I think, you know, I, 
I don't know. I think we could be there. Who would be England manager? You have, you have to be out of your mind. Oh, Christ. Well, the thing is, it's like, it's like the media, isn't it? One day you're going to be their bestest friend, and the next day you're going to be slating them, aren't you? I think it's pretty unpatriotic mm. of the news of the world to mm. have hounded it to the point that just before the World Cup, it's almost as though, it's almost as though they thought, you know what, it would be a better news story if we failed yeah. and if we won. Yeah. So let's do as much as we can to ensure England's failure. I just think it's the whole, yeah. that whole episode was just deeply unpatriotic. I yeah, couldn't believe that they did it. Yeah, look at the time when, when was it when they had a go at Bobby Moore, when he was um, allegedly supposed to have stolen that piece of jewellery during a World Cup? And it was all over the papers being slated. And, and they must be compiling files right now on every, on every England footballer they are. to bring them out. Just before the first game. There's something in the news of the world tomorrow. Is there? Coming out on soccer. So you know. So, uh, you know, it's just something I've seen again on TV being advertised. They're going to out a few um, soccer players tomorrow, which would be quite They're going to out them? Yes. Out them? Um, they're going to be, uh, they say they're gay soccer players. In the England team? Um, they're not saying at the moment. It's just, a, you know, news of the world sensational, gay soccer players. And they're going to out them tomorrow. Uh, huh. They don't need this, you know, just before a World Cup. I guess not, no. But then again, you know, they're going to take it, take everything with, you know, what they say, they like, fine, okay, nothing to do with you. Uh, you know, I play football, end of story. Good I'm news sorry. does, good news doesn't sell. No. Listen, Jackie, thanks a lot, I've got to go. Not a problem anyway. I hope, I hope you get some other people ringing in. All right, cheers. Okay, yeah. bye bye. This is LBC. Nick Abbott. 0870 Okay, here's, um... Hey, Rob. Rob. Yes, hello. How are you? Hi there. I was just going to say, it was just funny, for the first time today, I've been put on to you by one of your regular listeners. It's not, not a great day to hear me for the first time. <laughs> no, well, I, I have actually heard you before. I'm one of the only people who's received a call on a phone-in show rather than giving you one from you. How do you mean? Um, I'm actually a co-host with one of your regular listeners. You, you may know the chap I'm talking about. Uh, one of your greatest fans, I believe. Uh... A uh, co-host? Where? It, uh, in Swansea, in fact. Oh. I believe you've spoken to him earlier this evening as well. Student radio. That's right, yeah. So, okay. I, I was just going to follow because I, I feel like a, a sort of a kindred spirit with you at the moment. Well, this um, would be an excellent opportunity for you. Oh, it certainly is. You want to give me an hour slot as well, so I think the uh, hours, if your throat doesn't hold out, you might be joining me in hour slot. So. Your hour slot starts now. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to it. I've got so much to speak about as well. Uh, is, Off uh, you go. I was a bit uh, worried originally because when you had uh, Jackie on just before, she was speaking about uh, people being ousted, and as my topic I gave was speaking about me going to the ballet yesterday, I was worried about the implication. So I'm rather happy you broke it up with an advert break. So how was the ballet? Uh, it was very good. I went across to, to Swansea Grand Theatre. You've got to admit, Swansea isn't the kind of place you'd necessarily come for your cultural needs. Uh, but you struck me as quite a, quite a cultured character, so I thought you... You might wish to share in the, in the enjoyment of racing over Swan Lake at Swansea Grand. Hey, have you been to that lump in Cardiff? I haven't. I've got to admit, when you come to Swansea, you're sort of uh, made to dislike Cardiff. So, I think I've been there twice, and uh, I hate it more than most people, I think. That's bizarre. Is there any Welsh person that likes another Welsh person? <laughs> the North <laughs> hates the South, and I, 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 I would hate to, uh, to walk out of the town tomorrow and find myself been uh, people looking at me with daggers in their eyes, so um, I won't comment on Welsh people, I don't think. So, uh, oh yeah, right, because anyway. you're not Welsh. Well, trust me, the, the, every, it seems like every part of Wales hates every other part of Wales. Much, more, much more so than um, uh, England. I mean, people from Newcastle don't necessarily hate uh, people from Somerset, but uh, it's definitely the way in Wales. Yeah, it's certainly interesting. You got to the same time, I was walking around um, I was walking around Tesco this evening, just uh, doing a bit of shopping, just for the odds and ends, and they're still selling uh, DVDs of their Grand Slam victory from last year, so they're obviously <laughs> quite proud of themselves as a nation. Oh, they can't get rid of them. 
Well, I, no, that's, well, I was pointing out to me there was only two left, so either the demand has been so great that there's only two left, or as I suspect, it's probably the dregs left now. <laughs> um, but either way, I, I'm looking forward to the DVD being released of England beating Wales. I'm, I'm sure they'll do it. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll be picking them up. In fact, I, I, if I was thinking ahead and I knew you, you could cut me off because of your voice, then it would have been quite a... Uh, some, some kind of entrepreneurial spirit had I registered a domain and started selling them and plugged it on your show, but I didn't think ahead, unfortunately. So how was the ballet? It was superb. I went across with my girlfriend and it was Swan Lake, so... You, you sort of know where you are. I mean, everyone knows the ending. I, I don't think I'd ruin it for anyone if I said that you, generally you expect a swan to die. I think I'm correct in saying that. Yeah, the hunter shoots the swan. Yes, the end, yeah. which is my understanding as well, which is why when it came to the end of the ballet and everyone started clapping and the warlock had died, or, or whichever, whichever character he was playing, the warlock had died and the swan survived, I felt, I felt a bit cheated. Because <laughs> I, I looked when I went in when the lights were on, where all the kids were, to make sure I knew where they were so I could see them maybe get a bit upset and their mothers have to comfort them. And then it was a happy ending. And I actually sunk in my seat. I think I hesitated before I applauded as well. You wanted blood. Well, maybe not blood. It was certainly some kind of disappointment. It's somewhat upset in the audience. <laughs> I, I, had, I had images of myself. Just, it, would have, it would have made my evening. You, you go out for your girl and you, you want to show her some culture, try and make her believe that you're some cultured chap, but secretly you're just there for yeah, the perks of seeing children cry. It's just... Uh, you got to get your kick somehow, haven't you? I only went to the ballet you know, once, no, a couple of times, and the thing that surprised me the most was how loud they are. How uh, loud the footfalls are. <laughs> yeah, it was quite... It, I think Swansea Grand doesn't really lend itself to the Moscow City Ballet. Um, at a point, you missed the cues for playing music, so you had people... Uh, also, you know when you're playing, if you're playing basketball, your trainers screech on the floor? Mm -hmm. um, at points, it was like they were wearing Nike Airs rather than ballet shoes. <laughs> which is a little bit embarrassing, but I don't think most people noticed because I had the images of everyone going there in jackets and shirts, as I did, uh, but I saw more people in shell suits than ties, uh, which is a little disappointing. Well, that's, uh, that's Swansea for you. <laughs> you can say it, but I wouldn't dare comment. I, <laughs> I fear for my life otherwise. Hey, I'm speaking as someone who's wearing a shell suit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're ill, I mean, it's understandable if you're ill. You can wear shell suits and caps. Obviously, there's, there's a sort of range for the caps, but... But when you see the ballet on TV, they don't have the noise, the crashing noise but when they jump on, up, up and down on the stage. You assume that as, um, uh, as graceful as they are, that they don't actually make a noise. And no, then you see it in real life, and they're thundering about like a herd of elephants. I was, I was quite impressed by the quietness, but I was also... I think my first, first thing I said to the missus as I came out of the hall was, I was genuinely shocked. It was, I wasn't saying it just to be some kind of wide boy or something, but they were really tight, weren't they? If you ever see a ballet, they are tight. I mean, I've seen that, but these were something else. You mean... Tired. Are you saying tired? T tight, T-I-G-H-T-F. What are tight? They, they really are tight when you're in ballet. It's, uh, it's certainly something else. If you're in the front few rows, you can pretty much tell what the, uh, <laughs> the star's religion is. Uh, it's, um, yeah, no, well, it's, listen, why do you think they call them tight? Nick Abbott. Right, let's go with uh, one in West Hampstead. Amanda. Amanda. Hello. Amanda. Can you hear me? Okay, can you hear Hi, me? is that Nick? Yes. Hello, I just thought I'd ring you, um, I, I don't know if you've heard of Sanderson Specific. What's that? You gargle with it. It's for professionals, like my sister's a, a professional actress. I'm going to write it now. And it, it's a professional gargle for voice, people with voice problems. Say it again. It's Sanderson Specific. And you can get it in chemists, but not, not boots, I don't think. It's more of the smaller chemists. And what is it? It's um, an antiseptic which you gargle with. You, uh, if you read the instructions, you gargle and then you swallow. Um, I haven't read the instructions myself, but apparently it's amazing. So I thought I'd let you know in case you hadn't heard of it, because you sound in a bit of, in a bit of trouble with your voice. <laughs> <laughs> of all the things to go wrong on a talk show host, the only thing that you can't do a show with it's the only thing that's happened to me. I mean, I could have come in here with broken legs. Yes, but, but yeah, your most important instrument's your voice. 
And I thought, I thought today, hey, you know what, if I actually lose my voice completely, yeah. I wish perhaps that I had insured it. <laughs> because who knows when it goes, it might never come back. Well, this can help you up to a point. It's pretty strong stuff. But uh, my sister said, if your voice is really going to go, then it's just going to go. But this is the, your last option. It's, it's apparently very good stuff. Right, I'll, I'll drink a couple of pints of that and, <laughs> and come back and see what happens. Okay, well, good luck. Thanks a lot. Okay, take care. Ta -ta. Bye. LBC 97.3 LBC 97.3 Nick Abbott Absolutely no sound came out at all. It's uh, kind of like starting a car on a cold day. Let's see if uh, somebody else can take over for a while. Here's uh, John in Barnes. Hi, Nick. <laughs> How are you? Uh, well, on the upside to your problem at the moment, at least it sounds like there's a name for your pain. <laughs> well, and the doctor can probably give you a nice big horse for it as well. The uh, last time I was in the doctor's, well, for anything actually, um, the last couple of years, They've just basically shrugged their shoulders, and the last time I spent overnight was admitted overnight, and then uh, had like six or seven doctors prodding me and poking me, and was paraded in front of all the uh, student nurses and doctors and stuff, and was discharged in the morning with a kind of a shrug in the shoulders and said, we don't know what's wrong with you. What, they hospitalised you? Yeah, overnight, did all kinds of tests and took blood, they took a couple of armfuls of blood. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, in the morning they kind of shrugged the soldiers a bit more, and let me go. Huh. I specialise in things that the medical profession can't cure. <laughs> you name it, I've got it. Or, or if I don't have it right now, I've had it in the past. <laughs> and um, shrugging the shoulders... Uh, <laughs> shrugging the shoulders is one thing. When they raise their eyes to the ceiling when you come in the room, that's something completely different. And you know that you've been there going, I uh, just one too many times. Well, the last time I was in there, um, which was about a week ago, with terrible pains in my legs, couldn't stand up, couldn't do anything. And I thought, well, this has got to be something serious. There's some kind of spinal problem or something, like a compressed disc pressing on the nerve or something really, really serious. So they took me straight in and saw the doctor almost immediately because they clearly thought it was something um, quite serious as well. And after about an hour again of prodding and all the, the invasive questions, I was told it was uh, too much calcium in my body and that my thyroid wasn't processed properly. And How do you get too much calcium? I do think an extortionate amount of tea. Tea? Very milky tea. Not cocaine. <laughs> I just think today. Let me see if I can uh, last long enough to um, find this. One moment, please. If the government in uh, Colombia wants us to take more cocaine, because of its medicinal benefits. I'm not kidding. Huh? What benefit would that be? Um, what? No, I can't find it. Oh, there we go. Coco. Coco. Or not Coco. Coca. Has more calcium than milk. David Choka Hwanka said. In, uh, uh, so I presume you pronounce it C H O Q U E H U A N C A. <coughs> Dead yesterday in a paper in Colombia. Eva Morales. Uh, you know what? I can't read this. <laughs> I, 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 
piece of it and I thought, oh, I can't do that. Maybe if I whisper that would be better. Hey, can you hear me now? Great. Okay, we're going to take a break and then come back and see what happens. Okay, um, it's come to uh, a point where it doesn't uh, seem sensible for me to carry on because this is kind of ridiculous. Is there anybody in the history of radio that's had it uh, quite as um, uh, inappropriately on the air as me right now? So I'm going to go away and not say anything for the next uh, day and uh, see how it goes. What you'll be left with now is um, a tape of my good close personal friend and a woman who I think the world of. It's uh, Wendy Lloyd on LBC 97.3.